Hi class, welcome to topic one, DQ2. So we're on our second DQ of week one. We're using Excel formulas again. All right, so for this DQ, what we're gonna be doing is we'll be calculating the unit prices of different items. This is extremely helpful when you go to the store and you're looking at two different quantities and you wanna decide which one's actually cheaper. It's not always cheaper to buy in bulk and then this can kind of help you figure out if you're getting the better deal. Okay, so in this sheet, we have a lot of blank cells. I know I talked about the color coding in my DQ1. Um, color coding for DQs is not consistent. And as you can see, there's no color coding system here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill out the price, quantity, unit price, and units for all of these cells for each of these items. I'm going to go through the first one of what I want you guys to do. I'll go through kind of how to deal with the inconsistent units, and then I'll leave the rest of them for you guys to do. Okay, so let's start with flour. So for flour, we have three different options. We have 10 pounds for 339, 15 pounds for 431, and 25 pounds for 749. So out of these three packages, we want to see which one's going to get us the best unit price. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in Excel is we are going to list out our information. So I'm going to start with the price. There are two ways to type in the price here. So one, I can go ahead and type it in as 339 as a number. It possibly will put that dollar sign in front of it. Let's say it didn't. So let me do this again. Okay, so let's say I type in 339. It doesn't put a dollar sign there. This is where we can adjust the formatting and we can input that dollar sign. So to adjust our formatting, we'll click on the cell we can use our drop down menu, choose currency, and then it'll input that dollar for us. The other way to do it, I'll show you for this next one. So if we have 431, I can go ahead and type this in with the dollar symbol. So I can do dollar 431, type it in, and then it'll automatically convert that cell to currency for me. And then let me go ahead and do the last one, dollar sign 749. Okay, so I type in my price for each of them, making sure my price is formatted as currency. And then I'm going to type in my quantities. So I got 10, 15, 25. For my quantities, I'm not going to include the units on these because we are going to use them in Excel formula. When we use an Excel formula, we can only have numbers, we can't have words. So that's why I'm not listing them with their units. And then these cells, I want to go ahead and format these as numbers. That would be a standard for this type of quantity. It's not a price. It's not a percentage. So when it's not a price or percentage, we're going to default to number. And then I'm going to decrease the number of decimal places. So I still see 10, 15, 25. But now I'm seeing that number in that drop down menu. OK, so now for our Excel formula. To calculate the unit price of an item, you are going to take the price divided by the quantity. So for example, for that row five, that 10 pounds for 339, I'd be taking 10, or sorry, not 10, price divided by quantity, 339 divided by 10. So I'm gonna do my equal sign. I'm gonna click on that 339 or type in B5, type my division symbol, click on that 10 or type in C5 and then click enter. And then I'll do it again. This time I'm gonna type everything out, no clicking. So I type out my equal sign, find the cell name that contains my money, that's B6. So I'll type out B6. Type my slash for division, find the cell containing my 15, which is C6. So I'll type out C6 and then hit enter. And then I'll do the last one, equals cost divided by quantity. All right, so now I have my three different unit prices. Now I'm gonna go ahead and list my units for these. So the units are going to be, they're gonna follow the division you did. I took the price divided by the quantity. My quantity is in pounds. We had 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 25 pounds. So these unit prices are the dollar amount per the pounds. So our units here would be dollars per pounds. Um, you can write it out like that. You can only put $1 symbol. I think, I believe in the instructions, they talk about $1 symbol. So right here, they're giving you an example. 
Um, the other way we could write that out is we could do dollar slash pound. So slash and per are equivalent. Per is the English word for that slash. Um, so we could write those out either way. Either way you want to do that is perfectly fine. All right, once you've done all that, now we're going to actually figure out the best deal. The best deal is going to be the lowest unit price. So our, lo you know, our lowest unit price here is at 0 0.287. So we're going to highlight this item. Um, to highlight, we're going to select all the cells we want to highlight. I'm going to go up to this paint bucket, and then you can choose any color you want. And just try to choose a color that's not too dark so I can easily read. My favorite color is purple. I'm going to choose a light maroon, kind of go with purple. Looks more like pink, but it gets the job done. So highlight the best deal. Um, when you do get into some of these items down here, so bite-sized candy bars, coffee, and milk all have inconsistent units. When I say inconsistent units, when you look at the measurements for the quantities, ounces, ounces, pounds, they're not all three the same. Ounces, ounces, gallon, gallon, they're not all for the same. If you come up here to bite-sized candy bars, you have ounces, ounces, pounds, so they're not the same. So this is where you want to go ahead and convert to similar units before you find the unit prices. When you convert to similar units, you need to pick one unit you want everything to be in and convert to that unit. Um, for bite-sized candy bars, I would recommend converting that pounds to ounces because we already have two items as ounces. And when you get down here to milk at the bottom, you have two ounces, two for gallons. So you can choose which way you want to convert on that. You could do everything in gallons. You could do everything in ounces. Okay, so how do we actually do the conversion? So the first thing you're going to want to do is look up your conversion factor. So if we we're doing that pounds in bite-sized candy bars, I would look up what is the pounds to ounces conversion. What you should find is one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So we're gonna keep that in our head for a second. Okay, so the price is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna still type out 1950 for my price. I'm gonna make sure it says currency because it's a price. Okay, now for the quantity, I want to convert four pounds to ounces. So I need these pounds to be in ounces. Since it's one pound equals 16 ounces, I'm going to end up multiplying by the 16. So I'm going to go ahead and do a formula here to do this. I'm going to do equals four times 16. Um, you can do this in Excel or you can use a calculator. I'm going to challenge you to do it in Excel. When you do do this part in Excel, you will not be able to cell reference the four because we have the pounds for 1950. So you will have to manually type in your numbers here. So then that gives us 64. And then let's make a note to ourselves. We converted this to ounces. So this is now going to be dollars per ounce. So make a note of what your units are in. I converted pounds to ounces. I went from the larger unit of measure to the smaller, so my number got bigger because ounces contain small, a smaller quantity. Um, and then just make sure you note what unit you're in over here. And then you can do your formula. Formula is going to be the same as before, dollar amount divided by the quantity. When you do your unit prices, you can go ahead and leave those as three decimal places, or you can convert them to two. I'll leave that up to your choice. Um, if you were thinking about this realistically in the grocery store, everything would be rounded to two decimal places for currency. So if you want to do it that way, feel free to do so. Um, I hope this helps on the sheet. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm very interested to see your results on this one.